Hi guys. <clears throat> so I'm back for day two of the workshop where I'm making some textile art. So I've untaped my uh, fabrics from the newspaper and this is what they look like. Uh, so now um, I have to cut them and I need to cut like a piece from here and a piece from here to get started and then just you know pieces more pieces and more pieces to make um, the shape I want and the composition I want so um, this is where I had some trouble when I was watching this workshop for Stitch Camp um, because I didn't really understand what she was doing, like how she was making decisions. So I feel like I have to kind of pretend I know what I'm doing. Um, uh, so... I'm just going to jump in. I'm going to say I like this right here with the circle and the sort of cross hatch in the middle. So I'm going to cut a piece out with that on it and then we'll go from there. So I have to start cutting. Scary. Okay, I'm just going to do it. Remember, this is about the process, not the result. The result will be cool. I have faith in that. Um, I just have to let go of, like, ruining it, you know, the fear of ruining it. So I am going to keep to rectangular shapes for the most part, I think. Okay, so we got that. We'll set that aside. So now let's pick um, the other color, green, because this is mostly brown. And let's try and find where I could link these somehow. Okay, I could go for circle, circle, like that. That feels a little obvious. I could go for big circle, small circle. And I kind of like that one because it's like half full. Mm, what else could I do? This is going to take some... Thought. <laughs> but I don't want to think too hard. I want to just do it. How about maybe not? Yeah, how about that? Okay, so I can link, I see a sort of a link here where these lines in the green can go across to the lines in the brown. And then of course we've got the circles. So let's try that. Uh, how am I gonna cut this? Hang on, let's hold it. Okay, I think that's a good start. So I'm going to pin those. So 
So after I pin these, then I'm gonna sew them together with tiny little stitches. Oh, look at that. Um, and I do have some overlap, so I will stitch that on too. Okay, how about this side? Um, some more green. I could do that, continue that line. Or I could do it there. Ooh, I like that. I like this because I see a few connections. Let me zoom in. Okay, I see a few connections here. I see this big line <coughs> can connect, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay, I see this big green line can connect with this brown line. I see this brown line can connect with these two skinny brown lines that are like an outline that could be sort of an outline of this line um, and then I also see this little sort of half moon green blob here at the edge kind of connects with the edges of these four lines so I mean it's not rocket science I'm making it up I'm acting like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Okay, oh, I think I need a bigger pin. I'm gonna try pinning this and then cutting it. All right, so. I think I'm going to try and make a long strip, you know, since I'm thinking of doing um, cuffs or small brooch pieces, that would make sense because I can make a long piece and then I can cut it into smaller pieces later. Yes, we will be cutting it again. <laughs> This line. But let's do, well, okay. That line goes all the way there. Yeah, okay, I'll leave that. Now let's get another piece of this fabric again. Um, brown, more brown, because I think I want to kind of alternate the main color. And I am going to be stitching more of, you know, each color in, like I'll be stitching more brown into this and this piece. So there's more balance and then more green into this piece, if that makes sense. Okay, so where can we find connection here? I could do that and sort of continue this into a circle, that green blob into the brown 
circle. What else? Um, or I could do that brown blob, sort of mismatch to that green blob. I kind of like that. Um, what else? See, I'm doing the same circle thing again. Um, let's see. Could fold this back. And do that. I don't know, I think... I'm gonna go back to this. Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's try and pin it. And I don't have to cut these the same size. You know, like this is smaller than that one. I think this is the smallest of the three so far. Um, let's make this one kind of skinny. Okay. looking pretty good. Um, let's go over to this end and maybe do a brown. Do I want to do this fabric or maybe this one again? Okay. cut this edge off just so it's easier for me to see connections. continue these lines, these green stripes here, into those brown ones, those two thick brown ones. I kind of like that. Yeah, let's do that. And maybe what I'll do, that's a good start. Um, I think what I'll do is start a smaller piece. Now I've got this continuous line, like that.
I like combining the link between this blob and like these four blobs. I know that's more vague than continuing a line, but you just have to look for something you like, you know? You gotta like the way it looks. Am I in frame even? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I could do that. This this little blob can connects with that one. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and this these green dots connect with that green dot, that green circle. <laughs> I'll take a piece of this and then use that to connect them. Okay, let's try that. Okay, I think that will work. Now, how big? Overlap that and then connect this blob with that blob. Are there any other any other connections? Um I could make this kind of connect with this brown stripe and just make it like a V shape. Let's try that. connections here. To get going at least. So okay that is I need that I need another pin on that I think. Now I'm trying to remember what was <laughs> What was the connection on here? Oh, I think it was the... Yeah, 
It was these stripes. Okay, so that got twisted. All right, so we need another pin. here. Okay. So I've got these long strips. Um, I'll probably even up the edges more as I go, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, so the next thing is to, to add threads. I, you know, I have all this basting thread. I'll get rid of that eventually. Um, so I went through my thread stash and I actually got distracted for a day and organized a bunch of it. <laughs> I have a lot more thread than I realized. So these are some of the threads, or I will use some of these threads, probably not all of them. That's the wrong color. Um, so, you know, I looked for shades of green and brown that kind of match what I have. Um, so here's the brown ones. This one's variegated, so that'll be fun. Um, I did throw in this off-white to kind of match the, the base fabric. I think it's close enough. And then, yeah, all these shades of the green, ignore those buttons, that's for something else. And then I've got that variegated one, or striped one, I don't know. I guess it's striped. Yeah, okay. Anyway, um, so I've gathered all my threads, and now I'm just going to sit and play putting thread on these and making more fun shapes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the next step and I will come back after I do some of that to show you my progress. So I think this is the end of part one or parts one and two if you're going by the, the five day workshop that this was based on. So I'm back with an update on my stitching. Um, for the textile art that I'm making. It is still very much a work in progress. Um, I'm finding that it really is slow stitching. Um, so, you know, this is a lot, <laughs> even though this is only one strip, this is a lot of material. And I wanna do a lot of stitching on it. So it's gonna take me a while. So I think I'll just do periodic updates on this. And so this is the first one of my stitching. So we can start at the end here. Um, let's see if I can. Okay. So as you can see, I'm, I'm doing kind of very dense stitching, lots of different weights of thread um, not too many different colors. I think I showed you what threads I was going to use in the last segment, but I'll just refresh your memory. Here's my bag of threads. I just put all these together. Um, that's a needle book. Um, yeah, so I put all of these together in one bag so it's really handy. I can just grab it and go wherever I'm gonna um, go sit and sew. So, um, I'll just show you kind of what my thinking was on some of these. So I tried to emphasize this this circle that's made from these two pieces, you know, one half brown and one half green, um, putting more, um, I don't know, more lines in it, 
with the thread I did chain stitch in both the green and brown and then I've got this little line of green here which I didn't want to totally cover the paint I wanted you to still be able to see that there was a green line there <clears throat> so that's why I did the running stitch uh, I really like how the circles look when I stitch around them um, it's it is hard though because you you kind of want the paint to still show on some of it and so it it's hard to decide like what to cover with thread um, so I am you know sometimes I'm covering all of the paint and and then it gets a little lost I don't know um, but I really like how these circles look. I think they're really fun. And then I just tried to do outlining here of this brown patch. Um, and then I did some um, just short little stitches around the edges of this circle. Um, this got a little funky because of the other circles interfering with the circle um, but I did um, you know do some green stitching on the brown part of the circle and then some brown stitching on the green part of the circle to try and bring it together more um, what else okay this was really fun this long um, stripe here that kind of goes from one one patch to the next so I tried um, doing the contrasting color the brown over the green here and then green over the brown and then just mixing them together at this end of it um, and then I've got a few cross stitches here which go over the edge of that patch and into this patch um, and then there's just some random little spots of stitching here over the brown paint uh, and then this is actually turkey work um, which you usually make it a little denser and then cut it so that they're not loops anymore so they're like sort of a pom-pom um, but I really like how they look with the loops so I think I'm just gonna leave them like that <laughs> I think they're fun so I've got three of those there and they're just over big splotches of green paint which again it's hard to tell because I've pretty much covered it. Uh, what else? I did a little bit of filling in the white space here with some chain stitch. And then um, I was trying to get more of this patch connected to this patch. Uh, so I, that's why I did the just seed stitch over here and then these go right across these are bullion stitch um, and they kind of echo this um, these green curvy marks here um, let's see on this green patch I pretty much outlined it um, yeah and then I've got a little bit of stitching on the edge of this circle I didn't go all the way around and then I skipped over here and right now I'm working on a long chain stitch to go across um, and continue that line and this was fun. Um, I just started flipping through my uh, stitching book. I think this, I've got um, 
think it was the Sue Spargo book. But anyway, I looked up um, this one pistol, not pistol, what is it? Palestrina stitch. I think that's what this is. Do we have it in frame? There we go. Okay, so it's a circle. <laughs> um, and I like it because it's not covering too much of the paint. You can still see the circle in the paint. And I used two different threads and just held them together. Um, I'll show you which threads. Let's see. So I think it was this thread. Yeah, and this one. So this one's a very fine copper thread. But I really like how it looks together with the other, with just the off-white. If you can see that, kind of sparkles. So yeah, I like that. I'm happy with that. And there's one little French knot there. <laughs> um, I think that's it. So I'm going to do a lot more stitching. And like I said, I'll just come back and give you updates. And so, as you can probably guess, it'll be a while before I both finish the stitching and then um, make something out of this. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, it's really fun. I like working on it just a little bit at a time and just doing it slowly. So I would highly recommend this process. It's really fun. Okay, well, thanks for hanging out with me and hanging in there with me <laughs> uh, through this project. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you in the next video.